The haunting melody of the desert wind slowly fades as the first rays of dawn illuminate the Giza Plateau. Bathed in the golden light, the colossal form of the Sphinx emerges from the pre-dawn darkness. Its weathered face, a silent observer of countless millennia, gazes eastward, seemingly greeting the rising sun with an air of stoic defiance. Carved from limestone, a monument both awe-inspiring and vulnerable to the elements, the Sphinx presents a paradox. Its weathered surface bears the distinct marks of water erosion, a stark contrast to the relentless sun and wind that dominate the modern Giza landscape. How could water have sculpted this monument in such an arid environment? This central mystery continues to challenge archaeologists, ignite the imaginations of explorers, and beckon us to unearth the secrets of a forgotten past. The prevailing theory for the Sphinx's weathered features points to the ever-present desert wind. Imagine millions of tiny sand particles acting like a relentless sandblaster, not unlike the harsh conditions faced by the Mars rovers exploring the Red Planet. Over vast stretches of time, this wind-blown sand can smooth angles, round edges, and leave its mark on the ancient stone. If sand is blown consistently over time, its sharp features are slowly worn down to a flush, more bowed form. However, the sheer scale of the destruction on the Sphinx suggests a force more powerful than just wind. Another theory proposes a contrasting force, water. Unlike wind, water carves distinct visual signatures. Flowing water can etch vertical channels, known as flutes, into the stone. Picture a sudden downpour transforming the Giza Plateau into a temporary riverbed, rain cascading down the Sphinx's face, relentlessly carving away at its features, leaving behind these vertical grooves like permanent frown lines. Additionally, water can leave horizontal streaks called striations. These water-carved features are a stark contrast to the smoothing and rounding effects of wind erosion. Shifting our focus from the Sphinx itself, we come to its enclosure, the pit carved from the bedrock surrounding the monument. This seemingly insignificant detail holds a crucial piece of the puzzle. Look closely at the vertical walls of the enclosure. Notice the presence of vertical fissures and striations etched onto the stone. What's particularly interesting is the upward direction of these markings. Wind-blown sand would leave horizontal or diagonal markings, not vertical. This alignment perfectly aligns with water runoff patterns, suggesting a wetter past where water flowed freely, carving its story onto the stone. Envision these markings as a silent language, whispering tales of a time when the Giza Plateau echoed with the sounds of rushing water, and the Sphinx stood witness to a vastly different landscape. Now let's turn our attention back to the Sphinx facial features. Take a closer look at the differential weathering patterns on its surface. Certain areas like the missing nose and the heavily eroded face show extensive wear compared to other relatively smooth areas like the back. This unevenness is more consistent with water pooling in specific areas and causing localized erosion. Pockets on the face like the eye sockets and the area around the missing nose would naturally collect more water, leading to more pronounced damage in those specific areas. It's important to note that human intervention throughout history, particularly repairs, may have masked some abrasion patterns, especially on the body. Perhaps the ancient Egyptians themselves attempted to mitigate further water damage, unknowingly altering the Sphinx's original appearance. Imagine them meticulously filling in cracks or even resurfacing parts of the monument in an effort to preserve this majestic icon. However, the water destruction patterns themselves hold a key piece of the puzzle. Think of them as a blueprint, revealing how water flowed across the Sphinx's surface. By carefully analyzing these patterns and using computer modeling, we can virtually reconstruct the flow of water. This can help us understand not just the past environmental conditions, but also the potential design choices of the Sphinx's creators. Shallower, more uniform abrasion suggests shorter periods of water exposure, while deeper, more uneven erosion points to extended periods of water flow. Picture the Sphinx enduring a series of heavy seasonal rains over a long period, as opposed to a single, catastrophic event. By studying these details, we can start to piece together the story of the Sphinx's past encounters with water. The extent of water corrosion on the Sphinx is directly connected to its potential age. If water played a significant role in shaping the monument, 
it suggests the Sphinx's construction might predate the currently accepted timeline. Visualize a time when the Sahara was a far cry from the vast desert landscape we know today. Picture a lush, green expanse, a pluvial period with significantly more rainfall. Substantial water damage could push the origins of the Sphinx back to this wetter era, forcing us to reevaluate our understanding of ancient Egyptian civilization. Perhaps the Sphinx is not just a monument to a bygone pharaoh, but a testament to a time when the very landscape of Egypt was vastly different. This raises fascinating questions about the ingenuity and adaptability of these early civilizations. Think about them, living on the banks of a flowing river, a stark contrast to the harsh desert environment we see today. The Sphinx, in this context, could be a marker of their ability to thrive in a completely different environment. Perhaps it served as a guardian deity, watching over their settlements and reminding them of the life-giving power of water. To truly understand the destruction on the Sphinx, we need to look beyond the Giza Plateau. Finding evidence for a pluvial period in the wider region is crucial. Geological surveys can play a vital role in searching for buried evidence of ancient water features. Imagine geologists using ground-penetrating radar or seismic testing to probe the depths of the desert, like archaeologists using a giant metal detector. These techniques can reveal hidden features like dried up lake beds or river courses, potentially painting a picture of a wetter Sahara. Core sample analysis, which involves extracting cylindrical rock samples containing layers of history, can also be incredibly valuable. These samples are like time capsules, containing microscopic traces of plant life that thrived in wetter times. Pollen studies add another layer of evidence, helping to reconstruct past environmental conditions by identifying the types of pollen preserved within the rock. Think about how scientists can meticulously examine these samples, piecing together the puzzle of a bygone era. The pollen is seen as tiny time travelers, whispering secrets about the plants that once flourished in the region. The Sphinx remains a monument shrouded in mystery with the water weathering question adding another layer of intrigue. The ongoing scientific debate highlights the importance of critical thinking in evaluating different theories. As we analyze the wind versus water erosion arguments, alongside evidence from the wider Giza region, a clearer picture may emerge. The Sphinx's enduring allure lies in its ability to inspire us to ask questions, challenge assumptions, and push the boundaries of our knowledge. Through scientific inquiry, we can unlock the secrets of the ancient world, one weathered mark at a time. The Sphinx serves as a constant reminder that there's always more to learn, and that even the most seemingly insignificant details can hold the key to unraveling a grander story. As we continue to explore and analyze, the Sphinx whispers its secrets to those who dare to listen. Hopefully, we can look forward to future generations, armed with even more advanced technology, unlocking the Sphinx's mysteries and rewriting our understanding of this ancient marvel. The Sphinx may be silent, but it has a story to tell, a story waiting to be deciphered. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more content like this. It's London Rain!